I am the booktube god. It's the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. It is time to look at the most disappointing books I read in 2021. Now, I want to make clear that these are not necessarily bad books. Like the first one I'm about to talk about is an excellent book. But for whatever reason, it has disappointed me when I read it. So, let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is... Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. And this is crazy because Gideon the Ninth made it to my top list, so why is this one here? It is because I was looking forward to the same voice that I fell in love with in Gideon the Ninth. And there was also some experimental plot development, which I intellectually could appreciate, but I couldn't help but miss what I fell in love with in Gideon the Ninth. And I know there may be some controversy that I'm putting it here at all because it is a good book. I do recognize it is a good book, the prose, the writing, the plotting. I understand why many people would consider this a very good book. And like I said, intellectually, I can call this a really good book, but I couldn't help being disappointed. I should have seen it coming because Harrow is a different character from Gideon, so we're getting two points of view, but darn it, I missed Gideon so much. Nonetheless, I will be continuing the series when the next book comes out. Electa the Ninth, I believe, because whether I'm disappointed or not in the book, Tamsin Muir is an incredible writer. Coming in at number nine is <laughs> Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. Now, this wasn't a terrible book, but I was just so underwhelmed by it. I was expecting so much more. I did not like the world building. It is set in a... Caribbean-inspired fantasy setting concerning a woman who is the daughter of the ruler, and the ruler is kind of crazy. There is history and lore that this group of people that control the island overthrew a prior family, and by the way, each family has magical powers. I just was very underwhelmed. I didn't think the plot was particularly unique. And the world building was kind of annoying me because if we, if we are set in an island, certain things shouldn't evolve on an island that seemed to evolve on this one. And basically, I just believe this book got a little bit more hype than it deserved. Or at least I was disappointed when I read it because I was expecting so much more. Coming in at number eight is the Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman. And this is a sequel to The Devouring Grey, which I also read. And I thought it was a pretty good young adult horror. Even though I didn't really find Devouring Grey scary, I did enjoy it enough and was curious enough to get the sequel, Deck of Omens. So Deck of Omens continued sort of the things I didn't like in The Devouring Grey, mostly involving finding the characters a little bit unrealistic and therefore hard to connect with, and the author making odd choices like having most characters bisexual, you know, which is fine. We need more bisexual representation, but having so many characters being bisexual doesn't make it very believable, at least in my friend groups. But basically, we continue following the founding families that control the this otherworldly Lovecraftian creature that we found in the first novel into the second novel and there's more family dynamics and honestly I just got a little bit bored which is kind of the cardinal sin of any novel and while we did get a conclusion in my opinion it was not very inspired or at least for me felt predictable. Moving on to number seven Trashlands by Allison Stein. 
And I've talked about this before. I was very excited to see it and shelve it or shove it because the cover was so gorgeous. Then I read the premise about a future, near future society that has an ecological disaster. And that plastic is a commodity that people have to scrounge for because there's no more oil production. It, it sounded really interesting and it did not live up to my expectations. It's a very slow moving book. It's more of a character study than focused on plot. And if you don't connect with a character in a character study, it's hard to enjoy the novel, which is what happened to me. Also the world building I had issues with. So overall, a disappointing read. Coming in at number six, Lore by Alexandra Bracken. Now I flip-flopped on this book because at first I thought, hey, this is an okay young adult book. But the more it sat with me and the more I thought about it, the more I didn't like it. It takes the Greek mythos, brings it into the contemporary setting where once every so often mortals can battle gods and if they kill the god, they themselves become immortal. Please check out my review if you want to know more. And this was just one of those odd situations where the more I thought about this book, the less I found it very appealing. So. Coming in at number five, A Sky Beyond the Storm, the last book in the Ember and Ashes series by Saba Tahir. Now this series takes Middle Eastern mythos, creates a setting from it, sort of juxtaposes it to kind of a Roman culture. And I should say this is a middle grade fantasy, so we get a lot of middle grade tropes. I have to say in this series, I liked the first two books and then after that the books got progressively bad, but I just wanted to finish the series. So I was a completionist, but I don't recommend this series. The reading experience, at least for me, just got progressively weaker for every book until this last book I was just, I had to push myself to finish it. If you want to read a great series, with a Middle Eastern mythos setting, I'd recommend the David Bad Trilogy. Coming in at number four, <laughs> Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Klune. Now, I don't want to go too far into this book since I already did a whole video on it, but basically I was really hyped for it because how much I enjoyed The House in the Cerulean Sea. And while it retained the same type of whimsical fairy tale writing style, that the House in the Cerulean Sea had. Under the Whispering Door had a very unlikable character who seemed to change way too fast. And while the world building about the afterlife was interesting, ultimately it just didn't feel like there was a plot there. It just didn't feel like it went anywhere for so long. And frankly, I felt the romance subplot was a bit overly contrived. Did not enjoy this book. Even though it's a T.J. Klune book, even though I like this author, I have to admit that even an author that I like, sometimes a book can disappoint me. Coming in at number three, The Project by Courtney Summers. Now, The Project is a thriller about a cult and about a sister that gets trapped in this cult. I did not like this book at all. In fact, I DNF'd it about 50% through. I couldn't connect with the characters. I didn't care at all about what was going on. Maybe if you're really into cults, you might find this interesting. It just wasn't interesting for me. Coming in at number two, <laughs> The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Now, I was really excited about this book because not only is it a own voices novel of an indigenous American by an indigenous American author, but also I was really in the mood for a horror novel and this one won several horror awards and I did push myself to finish it and it was hard to finish. Now, credit where credit is due, this author knows how to make me squirm. There are some very graphically explicit horror scenes 
that made me actually cringe, which is pretty unusual because I've read a lot of horror and I don't usually have that reaction. But for this book, it was a lot. There was a lot of blood and gore and really graphic details of some crazy mutilations. And that would have been fine if I was connected with the characters, but I wasn't. The book follows, I believe, four men, indigenous Americans who killed or slaughtered a whole bunch of elk when they were young and are now haunted by elk, which doesn't sound scary at all, but believe me, the, the author knows how to get you. My problem was none of these characters were likable. And while I felt a lot of sympathy from the people around them, the focus was on these characters. And because I was unable to connect with them or be sympathetic with them, it felt very hard to push through this novel. And the writing style is very raw, realistic, and carries with it this real punchy prose. Well, that just got tiring for me after a while. But that said, the writing was unique where I can understand where some readers may really appreciate that uniqueness. And this was one of those books where I actively am mad at myself for not DNFing it. And instead, I just pushed through and read the whole thing. So if you've read it, please let me know what you think in the comments. Coming in at number one, King of the Rising by Kaysen Callender. Now, why this is number one is because I loved the first book so much. I was really expecting the second book to be just as good. The first book, of course, is Queen of the Conquered, anti-hero story telling the story of Sigourney, this black woman who owns black slaves in these islands inspired by the Caribbean islands. In fact, it was one of my top books of a previous year, which is why it is so disappointing that King of the Rising was almost unreadable. Now, I don't want to say too much about it because I really do want you to read Queen of the Conquered as a standalone book and just forget King of the Rising even exists. It is a continuation of the story of Queen of the Conquered, but it feels a lot slower paced to me. Even the writing style seemed denser and the main character wasn't an anti-hero, but it's just a person who is kind of ultimately pathetic. And I guess we're supposed to feel sorry for him at the end, which I guess I do, but I just regretted the journey to get there. And in the end, I didn't feel good about the main character. I didn't feel good about the book. I didn't feel good about myself. It's amazing that the author got me to feel those things, but it's not a reason why I would recommend a book to you. Oh my gosh, these disappointing book lists are so hard. If you've had disappointing books for 2021, let me know in the comments. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed.